In the last class, we learnt about the central limit theorem. Another way we can quickly explain that concept is to say that if we took a sequence of samples and averaged them, then we'd get a particular value. That calculated average value is from the normal distribution. If we repeated that and took another set of samples from the same process and calculated the average, we would get a different average value. But that second value is also from the normal distribution. To see why this is important, let's first quickly recap what the normal distribution looks like and learn more about its properties. The distribution appears as shown here. It is clearly a symmetric distribution. The peak is where the mean of the distribution lies. We have shown the distribution here, centered at zero. Let's take a little diversion. In practice, your data will have a mean that is non-zero. Take a look at the ammonia data set. The concentration of ammonia is, by definition, a value that exceeds zero, and ammonia concentrations cannot be negative. The histogram confirms this. But we can go find the average ammonia concentration value and subtract it from every point in the data set, and so create a new vector. We call this action mean centering. We have recentered the data. If I calculate the mean of this new vector, it must be zero. And if I draw a histogram, we can confirm it is centered at zero as well, just like the ideal histogram from the normal distribution. All that mean centering does is to slide the histogram left or right along the axis. It does not change the height or the shape of the bars. And I'll explain the red lines in a minute. So back to the normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is centered at zero. And at that point, we have the highest probability a value of around 0.4 of obtaining values. You can confirm this in R for yourself. Type dnorm0, for example. Try dnorm plus 1 or dnorm minus 1 and confirm that you get the same values as shown here. The total area under this normal distribution curve, all the way from minus infinity to plus infinity, is exactly 1. Again, this is a helpful feature of the standard normal distribution. I can quickly tell that the probability of obtaining a value smaller than zero is 50%. And because it's symmetrical, the probability of obtaining a value greater than zero is also 50%. Let's look at some other features. We introduced the concept of spread earlier, and we used the standard deviation, sigma, as the symbol for this. On the normal distribution, we see sigma here has a length of one unit. In fact, that is what sets the area under the curve to be one. Let's deviate back now to our centered ammonia data. We can get our histogram to line up with a standard distribution quite simply. Take every entry in the centered column vector and divide them, one at a time, by the standard deviation of the vector. All that this is doing, for those of you that are more algebraically inclined, is nothing more than multiplying by a constant. We're squeezing the data to have an area of one unit. And I've added the vertical red lines to visually indicate to you where the standard deviation has moved to from before to afterwards. When we divide our data this way, we call that a scaling step. You can convert any vector of data in this way. Start with your original raw data, shown here as x. First subtract the sample mean in the numerator, and then divide by the standard deviation. If you were doing this with population data, then we simply use the Greek letters mu and sigma instead. Now once you've done the centering and scaling, your recalculated data, called z now, has a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. We call this a standardized data vector. Notice also that standardization removes the units. If your x variable had units of time, the z, the standardized variable, will be dimensionless. Now I hope you can see why we standardize. It is so that we can compare our vector to the normal distribution, or that we can compare it to any other variable that's been standardized. Standardization does not change any features in the data. In particular, any outliers in the data before will still be outliers afterwards. If the data were independent before, they will still be independent afterwards. Let's go back to the normal distribution 
And I want to point out two features you must remember. You should never have to look these up. The area under a normal distribution, all the way from minus one standard deviation to plus one standard deviation, is about 70%. That is, the vast majority of our data lies in this range. There is 15% left over in the left tail and 15% remaining in the right tail. Also remember that the area from minus two standard deviations to plus two standard deviations is 95% of the area. That leaves 2.5% in the left and right tails. Remember it's symmetric. Now in the next video, we're going to introduce some notation and learn how to read values from the normal distribution using both R as well as statistical tables.